Welcome back to the IBJJF podcast. My name is Danny, and my guest today is Andre Porfirio. Andre is a PAN champion and an American national champion, and he's going to be part of the IBJJF Flow Grappling Medium Heavy GP that takes place on Friday, August 12th in Austin, Texas. Andre, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you guys, to be talking a little bit of my career, to the people uh, meet me a little bit better as well. Thanks for the opportunity, Danny. Thanks for the opportunity, IBJJF, and for grappling, and uh, I'm very excited for that. Let's get into it. I'd love to hear how you were first introduced to jiu-jitsu. What, what got you started in the sport? Uh, I started because uh, as a kid, I was a, a very chub kid, so my dad wanted me to, to put on the sport to lose some weight, so he put me, before jiu-jitsu, he put me in Muay Thai, Karate, soccer that is very popular in Brazil, but I never really stopped it in any of this tournament, in any of this, this sport. So one day he, he told me, he's like, oh, one of my friends, he does jiu-jitsu. I don't know how, that, how that works that much, but I can bring you to a gym. You want to try? And then I'm like, okay, whatever, let's try. And then he brought me there, and I tried it, and I did a class, and I love it. And then since then, I never stopped. And with three years of, uh, three months of uh, training, I started competing. And since then, I've been competing almost every weekend. What was it about jiu-jitsu that you liked better than some of the other sports you tried, like soccer, Muay Thai, and, and things like that? I think as a chub kid, I think jiu-jitsu was easier for me to... Because Muay Thai, I, I think about soccer because you have to run a lot. You have to do a lot of things like that. And I, I didn't like on the time. And and uh, I got a little bit bothered about uh, Muay Thai and karate because it was always uh, similar things. You know, punches and then kicks and then a little bit of kata and karate. And that's it. You know, jiu-jitsu, you always learn something. I, I like to say that jiu-jitsu is one of the only martial arts that you can give 100% of yourself on the training every day and you're going to hurt your partner, you know. And then the other martial arts, it's hard to do that. If you go 100% of the sparring, you know, Muay Thai sparring, boxing sparring, or even karate sparring, you can hurt your partner and tomorrow you don't have no one to train. So I think that's the beauty of jiu-jitsu. You always learn something and you also can give 100%. You can really, like, give all inside the train and tomorrow you still have your partner to train with and you always learn something new that's great and you mentioned that you started competing pretty early on into your training about three months into it what were your, yeah. some of your early competition experiences like do you remember those uh, my first five tournaments i lost in the first round to be honest my first five tournaments and then but i never gave up i when i went to the first one i i remember i went straight to the semis because i was like a uh, team team two team three don't have them nf kids white belt and then I lost in the semis on the first round. was my first fight, but I got third place anyway, and I got happy. I'm like, man, I want to do this again. And my dad saw that I had a lot of uh, eye of the tiger because the guy caught me a triangle, and I was on the triangle for like, I don't know, three, four minutes, and then I didn't top. I lost by two points. And it's like, I put you again. And then I start competing almost every week and almost every weekend. And the first five, I lost in the first round. Just on the number six, on the, the, the tournament six, that I, I was able to win my first fight, and then I won my first, my second, my third, and I got second place. I lost in the finals. And then since then, almost every weekend. My dad also like gave all the support possible. You know, Without him, it would be impossible because he, he was with me in every single tournament, paying the registration. The time was very expensive for us, but he got his money and he invest, invested in me. You know, it was, it was great. It's pretty interesting to hear that you lost your first five tournaments because obviously first you're five a, a great black belt, a great champion mm -hmm. now. And it's it seems like it's pretty common for those type of stories to exist where someone who reaches a high level in the sport had a lot of struggles early on. Would you agree with that? I agree. I remember when I was a white belt, I got to, I I, I mean, very, really addicted to jiu-jitsu, you know. Who knows me from close know that I, I leave this sport really 24 hours per day. And I had a bunch of uh, great magazines that on the time was very popular. And I remember to be reading an article about, about uh, Marcos Almeida, Buchecha. He's from the same city than me in Brazil, Santos. And he was saying the same thing. He's like, I lost my first five, six tournaments. And I, and was right on the time that I was starting. So I'm like, oh, it's okay. I can be losing now, but one day I, be, I can turn to be like Buchecha or something like that or a good black belt. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going. And I think this motivated me to, to even... Like, to be honest, Jiu-Jitsu was, I love it so much, I, I didn't care. I just was going there and competing and going back to the gym and training more. Next time I win, next time I win, next time I win. And then it started happening. 
Did, so did you decide pretty early on that you wanted to pursue jiu-jitsu as a career, do it as your profession? Uh, I think uh, my dad pushed a lot for that as well. I also, uh, after I started jiu-jitsu, I don't, I don't really had another hops. My thing was jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu. So it was very natural. It was not something like there was thinking on my mind, oh, I want to be a jiu-jitsu fighter or I want to be something else. It was just living the moment and like, competing compete was very natural you know i had no pressure for my family my dad was just like oh you like jiu-jitsu so i don't want you to do nothing else i don't want you to to work i just want you to go to school and to go train and to compete and that's it you like to compete i love to compete so i got i got you with that you know you don't need to think about nothing else just go train and compete so it was natural i grew up like that i grew up uh, inside the mass i grew up uh, inside the tournament so for me it was very natural you know i never thought about something else to be honest just after i got old after i got older you start to see the life different but when i was like till my 20 years old i was like just jiu-jitsu your journey ended up taking you to florida you're training at fight sports now yeah can you talk about how you ended up at fight sports and being yeah, in florida for sure uh i started with my professor my first professor was Renato canuto Renato canuto dad uh valdir canuto Chico in Brazil, and then I trained here for uh, training with him for uh, one year. And then after one year, my dad told me, "Man, you have to train uh, here. Don't think uh, they're gonna they compete that much." Blah blah blah. My dad is very like on top of that. It's like I want to put you with the best competitors possible. Who is the best competitor? So my dad got to visit uh, Alliance at the time, uh, G13, the the team from Godoy, Barbosa, and then he went to a place with very bad smell, with people with old <laughs> geese. And he's like, man, a social project that on the time used to be like the thing, you know, Cicero Costa project. And then he, he saw there, the meal. he didn't know who, who was then, but he, he saw the energy and he saw how they was, you know, Miao Brothers, Leandro Lo, Iago de Souza, Luisa Monteiro, all these big champions. And it's like, they look good. And then, we start seeing then every weekend, every tournament. Then he used to bring my, me, my dad, just me and my dad. We used to see them going there and winning the absolute, winning the absolute, winning the absolute. Every single belt, white to black, literally white to black. And my dad, oh, you have to train with these guys. Look, then they they win every weekend. They beat everyone. You have to go train with them. And, and then he's like, so I'm just gonna bring you there. So we moved the city. I used to live in Santos. We moved to São Paulo. That is the capital. Like when one hour, one hour and a half from Santos, and then uh, I started training with them. He put me on the social project in 2012. I trained with them from with Master Cicero from 2012 to 2018, and then in 2018 I received a purpose to come to Orlando teaching a hands and Gracie gym. I was a purple belt, and I was looking forward to have a, a, a to help my family to have a better. A, a, uh, uh, to give to my family a better life, to make more money and everything through the jiu-jitsu because it's really hard to make money with jiu-jitsu in Brazil. Really, really hard. So my dad told me, like, go to U.S. and make the things happen there and then whenever you're ready, you can bring us. And then I came as a purple belt. One week later, I won the the awards as a purple belt. I got my brown from Cicero. But I was teaching uh, at Hansel Gracie School, but I was still representing Cicero Costa. So I won one word, got the my brown, and then I stayed there for two years. I got to be the first one on the ranking for brown belts. Uh, I won a, a bunch of tournaments. I won uh, Pan American Ogi. I won uh, a bunch of opens. I got third at words in the, uh, brown belt. So when after I got third at words, I was training just white belts mostly and teaching class. And then I saw I'm like, man, I have to. To a black belt, I have to achieve uh, 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 another level. I have to train with a compadre. I cannot j be just teaching class to white belts, blue belts, and uh, try to, to be a black belt world champion. For me to keep with my journey, I have to train in a bigger gym, bigger school. And I knew some people here in, in Miami. And then I saw Russo came here. I saw Lucas Lira. I had another friend from Brazil that was here too. And they was always inviting me to come visit. And then I came one day, I saw the vibes, I like the people, Cyborg, man, amazing guy, you know, nothing to say about him, just helped me since then, and treat me like like his brother since the first day that I met him, and then I'm like, oh, 
there I'm gonna have good training I'm gonna learn no gi as well I'm gonna I can I can gi- help them with my technique and we all gonna be be happy you know so I came can you talk about some of your experiences training at fight sports there's a lot of really great competitors that come through For there sure. and a lot of competitors who are just based out of fight sports mm-hmm. can you talk about some of the guys you've gotten to train with and and how that experience has been uh it was amazing right when I came here it was on the ADCC camp so we had a uh, Muhammad Ali here we had a uh, Pat- Patrick Gaudio and then right after that came uh, Rodolfo Vieira to do his camp to who is number one that when he fought uh, no first he came to do his camp to Spider when he fought uh, Kainan on the Spider and then he came to do the who is number one camp when he fought Kainan again on the who is number one so I got to train with him Bushisha is always here because he lives close by he lives in Coconut Creek he trains MMA American top team Antonio Carlos Jr. Carlos Sapato is always here Gilbert Burns so a bunch of champions also when I first came was Ana Carolina Vieira Luana Alvugir um, today like we have uh, Wagner Rocha Cyborg we always receive uh, receive visiting for everywhere because Lovato because people come not just to fight sports a lot of people come just to fight sports but a lot of people come to Miami to visit the city because Miami is Miami and like they ended up come here training with us, Roberto Jimenez. Like we got to train with the best of the best for real. Uh, for me, the the best generation that uh, Future Costa ever made was my generation because we like I grew up with me, uh, me, Talisson Soares, Diego Pato, Kainan Duarte, Gustavo Batista. Um, who else? Gustavo Batista, Rafael Vasconcelos, Rafaela Guedes. Uh, a bunch of champions, Italo Moura, Jefferson Guarese, Jonas Andrade, uh, Johnny Fihosha, all these guys came from the same place and the same time, so we had an amazing generation there, so I'm glad to, to be part of this. The training with all those killers really paid <laughs> off because you ended up winning <laughs> your first pan title in 2021, and you had an incredible run. You beat some legends in the sport. Can you talk about what it was like to win the pans in 2021 and just how it felt to get a major title at Black Belt? Oh, it was amazing. This was my first year competing on the Black Belt level. You know, uh, I got my Black Belt in the middle of 2020, but uh, 2020 I don't really had the opportunity to compete that much because of the, the coronavirus. But I was training a lot. I was training a lot. So I was getting my confidence sharp and everything. And then when I got to compete, uh, first I did a good job uh, competing a bunch of opens before to get prepared, you know. So I went to everywhere. I went to Austin, I went to Chicago, I went to Phoenix, I went to Charleston, like everywhere, literally everywhere. Just going there and competing, 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 competing Atlanta. And I fought like really good guys uh, on this path. I, I, I fought Dubion Stone, Dominic Bell. I fought uh, Elton Jr., I fought uh, Bruno Matias, I fought a lot of good guys on the Open, so when I got to to, to Pan Ams, I felt prepared, I was training a lot, and I also was with a lot of experience, I was uh, with a lot of uh, confidence, because every weekend I was competing, and I knew my opponents was not on the same, on the same way, they was not competing like me, and they was not feeling like uh, home, like I was feeling, because when you're always competing, you meet everyone, you know, you always there. It's the same staff, it's the same referees, the same everything. So I felt home, you know. I don't felt like, you know, when you go in somebody's gym and then you get nervous because you're somebody's gym and maybe you don't do your best. And when you train at your gym, you feel, oh, here I'm, I'm calm and relaxed. So I felt exactly that. And then I went there and I, I made it happen, you know. But I always knew, to be honest, I always knew that. Major, t- uh, major titles would come for me, and I know the world title gonna come as well because I know who I am. You know, I've been winning since I was a a white belt and four times world champion on the color belts, and you know this. This, to be honest, was very normal for me. And uh, like next year, I'm sure I'm gonna win this world title as well. Yeah, well, it was a great accomplishment, and the pan title along with all your other accomplishments have led to you being invited to the IBJJF Flow Grappling Medium Heavy GP. You have yourself, you have Leandro Lowe, mm-hmm. you have Ronaldo Jr. and Matias Luna. It's a pretty stacked lineup. Yes. What were your What were your thoughts originally when you got invited to be part of the GP? Uh, I, to be honest, since then, uh, uh, the, uh, the first time they posted about the GP, <clears throat> I, I felt that it would be in. I, I, at first, I don't see that they have the four guys already. I thought they was just posing they're going to have. And then I started 
tell my friends, tag me, tag me, tag me, tag me. I was the guy, I think, who, who had the most tag because I felt <laughs> like, man, if I go to that, I, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I don't care. I'm going to win. And then after they posted and they had the four guys I let them, I felt a little sad because I, for me, I felt that I should be in, you know, because uh, Ronaldo is amazing, Mati is amazing, but they, they are not even medium heavyweights. They are uh, uh, middleweights, you know. So I'm like, man, I should be in, I should be in. And then after when they, they gave me the, the, the invitation, they told me Gabriel Warsh got hurt. And I'm like, now I don't want to miss this opportunity. I'm going to show them why I deserve to be there and why they, they choose me, you know. I don't want to... I know everyone going to be prepared. I know Matias. All of them are, are, are friends, you know. I know Matias a long time. I know Leandro since I was a white belt. I know Ronaldo. I fought Ronaldo. I fought Matias. I fought Leandro for all of them already. And then, but uh, I feel that I'm more hungry, you know. They have more opportunities. They had more opportunities in the past. And this is one of the biggest opportunities I, I had. And then, I mean, a moment of my life where my mind's clear. I feel good, you know, I'm not worried about nothing. My life is like in a stage in a perfect stage to go there and and win. Because mind is everything, mindset is everything. You know, of course you have to train hard, you have to drill, you have to do everything. And I'm doing eating right, everything right. But the mindset is one of the most important. And right now my mind is clear, man. Like I can tell you I mean leading peace. So it's just a I'm excited. Just wait the day and show my jujitsu to the world. It's gonna be good. I'd love to hear your thoughts on your opponents. I know you <laughs> mentioned that you fought all of them before. Yeah. You fought low very recently at the mm -hmm. at the worlds. Yeah. So what what are your thoughts on on the bracket? Uh, I think they're gonna put me and low in the first round to be their uh, rematch from words. I think they're gonna do that, and also they're gonna put Matia against Ronaldo because they had a little bit of uh, rivalry. Matias beat him last time at the Mar American Nationals. And uh gonna be good. Uh next time last time I fought low, I I feel that I gave a little bit too much respect to him because I grew up watching him as a my one of the biggest idols for me. You know, I was a white belt from the same gym as him, I was the black belt, there was the man. And then but in the middle of the fight I I'm like, man, like it's not like I'm here today, you know, like I'm here because I deserve it. I I don't have to give any respect to him. And I start to be aggressive. Like, on the first minute, I give a little bit of respect. He made two points. And then I start to put the push the pace, push the pace. And, but he's very good with the uh, 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 control when he's winning, you know. Very good to, to stall, but he's right when he's winning. And then he did a good job. But uh, right after the match, I spoke with my dad. I spoke with my coach. And then I say, like, uh, I, I don't want to lose to him anymore. I felt, you know, like... I, I can do it. I can do it. It's like, he's amazing. He's down the low, but I'm under profit, you know. I can do it. I can do it. And then I, I'm excited. I hope they put me and him first round, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, pretty much any of the matchups that, that could go down in the bracket are going to be really exciting. Everyone goes forward. Yeah. Everyone pushes for the submission. There, it's going to be mm -hmm. an electrifying bracket. That's going to be sure. good. Uh, Ronaldo moves a lot, moves a lot. So going to be a really interesting fight. Too. I fought him twice. I beat him one. He beat me once. Uh, Matias, I beat him at Wards as a purple belt as well. The same day that I lost to Ronaldo, I beat him in the absolute, and then I lost to Ronaldo by rougher decision. So like we always we always been fighting against each other, you know. We know each other since white belts. We we like I know they very well. I know them very well, and they know me very well. So this this is gonna be really fun, really fun. I can't wait, for real. It's gonna be amazing. I'm super excited. And another awesome part of the GP is that it's gonna be the also gonna feature the first female GP mm -hmm. and some super fights. Do you have any thoughts on the first female GP? We have Fion Davis. We have Natalie Hibero, Bianca Basilio, and Anna Rodriguez. Um, this is going to be fun. I, li I like Natalie Ribeiro. I like the way she fights. I like she's very confident. You know, she's very, very confident. But all of these girls are very good. Uh, Anna is very good competitor. She's like, I know her since she was the juvenile. And she's, for me, all of them, she's the best competitor, you know. But I don't know... Uh, I don't know if she's gonna be able to hold the pace of Natalie or or Bianca, Fiona as well. So I think I go if I have to choose for this Grand Prix, 
I think I would go with Anna, to be honest. I, I felt like Anna, she's a very good competitor, you know. Maybe she don't want to give a show. Maybe she don't want to give a show of Jiu-Jitsu. But she, she knows how to win. She knows the path to win, you know. She plays with the lapel. She plays with the 50. She plays with the rules very well. She came from high school. The same school that came with Lucas Rook. Same school that came uh, uh, Mateus Gabriel. So they know how to play with the rule sets very, very well. Marcio Rodriguez, school in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. And... I think I think gonna be with her. Yeah, and it's great on top, yes. great on bottom. She won two world titles mm. in a row, so it's a good pick. Good pick. <laughs> She's very good, and she knows how to play the game really, really well. Like I really enjoy to watch her fight. Like when she have to hold, she hold. When she have to attack, she attacks on the right time. You know, she don't open up too much and create too much risk for her. So Bianca, she she have a hard pace. Fiona as well, um, even not, but. I think the the most smart competitor is going to be Anna. We also have two really, really great super fights. The first one's Andy Murasaki versus Levi Jones Leary. Any thoughts on that one? Uh, Andy, uh, uh, he, he had a very good year this year. He I spoke with him the beginning of the year. Uh, he asked me about uh, the rhythm of, uh, of tournaments before a big competition. I spoke with him, and he did a great job. He, he did compete a bunch of opens. He started a little slow, but after he started winning, even weight and absolute fighting in the middleweight division, he did great work at Panams, great work at work fighting at the middleweight. And uh, Levi, I'm a big fan of Levi, of course, like a beautiful jiu-jitsu, but uh, I've been watching him. I mean, I almost in every single IBJJF tournament, and I've been watching his fights uh, on the last tournaments, and I don't, I don't be feeling too much uh, security on him. You know, I don't know what's happening. I know the personal life can can sometimes uh, 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 affect uh, uh, our lives inside the match. Then also happened with me before. I don't know, but I think uh, I think uh, Andy gonna catch this one. I think Andy gonna catch this one. I think he's in a better spot right now. You know, I think he's mentally spot. I think he's more confident. He just got second at Wars, got second at Panams. Levi been losing small tournaments, been losing at uh, Opens. Then I know he, he's been losing to guys that I know that he can beat, you know, and he knows that he can beat. But something is holding him. Something is holding him, you know. I never asked him, but maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm going to go with uh, Andy. I'm going to go with Andy for this one. Both, both are incredible Amazing. competitors, but I like what you said about Andy at middleweight at the Worlds. It was cool to see him go up a weight division and be so, so dominant. dominant. He looked incredible. 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 He had amazing fights. And also at Panams, that he did a great fight at lightweight as well. Yeah. This fight going to be at lightweight or middleweight? I believe it's at middleweight. middleweight. Yeah, so I'm going to go with Andy for sure. The next super fight is Herbert Santos mm-hmm. and Felipe Andrew. This one has fireworks written all over it. Both of these guys are super dynamic, very submission oriented. What are your thoughts on uh, this match? for this one? I like I like both a lot, but I think uh, Felipe Andrew been having an amazing uh, not just this year but this last years. He, like with a consistent that like he's been winning everything, literally everything. I think the only only tournament he don't won uh, uh, yet was the Worlds. He, he won after Pergisa got uh, tested on the doping, but uh, he won literally everything. He won double gold at the uh, Europeans, so double gold Pan Ams, like two, three years in a row. Uh, won the another Europeans when he met Keenan on the triangle, the absolute, and then he lost the, the finals of this division to Patrick Gaudi, but he's been winning everything. And Abbott's don't like Levi, you know, it's amazing. He has a beautiful jiu-jitsu, amazing jiu-jitsu. Now he's in Atos. I see his his came to 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 Texas to have his camp there. I don't know why, but uh, I go with Felipe Andrew. I think Felipe Andrew gonna gonna get this gold for sure. I think so. Yeah, Herbert had that incredible match with Lovato mm-hmm. at the Worlds. I thought he looked looked great in that match. But Felipe also uh, competed at American Nationals yeah. recently, and he won double gold, gi and no gi. And then in no gi, he was doing a lot of different mm-hmm. leg attacks. So you can tell he's working on different areas of his game. Which yeah, is really we cool can see that the, the Felipe is very focused. You know, he's very focused. He always brings something new to the table. Before, when he was a purple belt, blue belt, he used to do like just, literally just foot locks and triangles, and like was amazing. The best foot locks and triangles I ever see. 
But uh, after that, he started to stop the, the footlocks he used sometimes. But now he has, like, takedowns. He can pass your guard. He can sweep you from everywhere. He can do gi. He can do no gi. I'm a like, big fan of Philippe Andrew, to be honest. He has amazing jiu -jitsu, so Amazing jiu -jitsu. Yeah, it's been ve very fun very to watch fun. this game evolve over very time. Very fun. Very fun. He's always bring something new to the table. Absolutely. Well, Andre, did you have any other thoughts you wanted to share on the GP or on anything else before we, we sign um, off? I just want to say that my i i gonna be ready i gonna be 100 percent ready uh i'm gonna i'm going i'm coming to win you know i'm not coming to just compete i'm very happy i wanna say thank you to ibgjf for the confidence i wanna say thank you to frog grappling for the confidence as well i be competing as a ibgjf in ibgjf for so long you know and finally got my spot and then i don't wanna miss this opportunity you know i just gonna Training the hardest, gonna give my best. I I know I have Jiu Jitsu to win that, and I really want to put my name in the Jiu Jitsu history. And now is the time. I'm ready. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be totally present, mind clear, family on my side, and ready. Let's go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Andre. I really appreciate it. For everyone listening, definitely make sure you check out the IBJJF Flow Grappling Grand Prix. It's gonna be on Friday, August 12th. We have the medium heavy GP for the males. We have the first ever female GP, and we have two incredible super fights, so you're not going to want to miss any of this. So thank you again, pleasure, Andre, man. for your time, and thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you guys soon for another episode.